All right, guys, welcome to my Duke Shrimp Waiter Monster Review. He is a light and um, water blossom era monster. He was a bounty hunt exclusive attacker. So, his lore. After his family was cruelly slain by a passing troop of abominations, Shrimp Waiter knew he had to fight the dark side. He took up a powerful weapon and traveled to space, where he learned to fight for the light in honor of his family. May the cocktail sauce be with you. Okay. Um, his lore and his whole design. His whole theme is basically supposed to be Luke Skywalker from uh, Star Wars, I believe. I really never dip my toes in that. But it seems like a really cool and very, very direct like um, knockoff. I don't even know what his sword is supposed to be. That's not a lightsaber, just like pressure air. That's what it looks like. His finisher, the, the sauce be with you. Disables trait and removes positive effects from all enemies. So very powerful, although I wish he would remove the positive effects first so that, you know, it removes positive effects so it removes evasion, megaton. Then you could disable everyone's trait. Deals heavy special damage to all enemies. 50% chance of instantly defeating an enemy. 20% chance if it's a boss. So, I mean, I feel like if a, an attacker this strong is doing very, like, deals heavy special to everyone, they're probably going to die quicker. And I always find it funny that they still do 50% chance of defeating 20% if it's a boss. There are, like, no bosses in this game that anyone cares about or has a hard time beating. Like, there's no true bosses in this game, so it's kind of silly. Um, so let's go over his trait. Um, I will say his elements are great for the current meta. I don't know how flipped the meta is going to get because of the um, the Abyssal era. But for the long, long light meta that we've been in, this guy has kind of been underrated because he's great. He has light, so he's a part of the light meta, so they'll be weak against him. But then he has water, so he's doing strong water attacks against a very, very fire-heavy meta. Being Pierce Monsters, Elvira, you name it. So, his trait. Rank 1 is the Umbrella trait. Status caster, hardened. So, all status effects will have 20% less accuracy. Alright. Then, second trait is immune to stun. Kind of weird that those they're still doing this, where it's like immune to stun, immune to possession. When they could just bundle it in a whole package of immune to control and call it a day. So, your immune to stun and possession, both of those on their own, are specifically good. But they're not like anything big to holler about. That's why you'd rather have tough than immune to any status caster because like if you're tough then there's a chance it won't land but there's a chance they use any kind different kind like you don't know if you're gonna face a teddy bomb or a lord hey man so i have one immunity or the other when they're you know both gonna be equally um luck based for them to get their usage like not luck based but there's a word for like when things are specific that you need to meet specific criteria just like shadow and triple damage light hater it's specific, I guess. So these are actually both specifically really good, I'd say, because of the two monsters I just named. Lord Hayman, of course, he can do cleanse, um, a like double cleanse extra turn, and then he can do a cleanse double possession to one possession AoE. He has a mega possession AoE. Lord Hayman, underrated, but he is really strong with the possessions. So that's a great immunity. And Teddy Bomb, he's being given out for, like, as free as you can get a monster right now and the Xmas tiles flip. So you're definitely going to see more of Teddy Bomb. And an immunity to stun will never hurt. Of course, these are both situational. That's the word I was looking for. They're both situational, but they're both still good nonetheless. Status caster, area drowned. I personally think this is really good if you're fighting like... And this is so popular these days where there's no taunt or megaton monster on their team. If you're fighting like an Elvira... Not an Elvira, because she'll have her uh, torture immunity, but like... A Serpentex, a Cupid, this Drowned will go a long way in damaging them. So it's just a nice dot status caster, but at the end of the day, dots are never really... Like, status caster dots are never, ever really going to make a difference in battle. If it's the right element, like, if you land a Poison dot from stat Serpentex status caster on Amonia, that'll get you far, but, you know, Drowned, not so much. And then there's status caster dodge area, will evade area skills. This is really his big selling point. But the big problem with him is just like Hornroot, his very, very best, very usable, like very cool, you know, everything good um, trait or status caster is too far up. Like a rank 4 status caster um, dodge area would be hard enough to get to as is. But now 
um, so you have to be a pro because and no nothing less than a pro is going to be able to max out a monster like this to get status caster dodge area and even then it's not even a trait it's a dodge it's a status caster so it can easily be cleansed away so that is the one big flaw with this monster he would be super powerful and i mean super powerful if he had that status caster dodge area at least sooner but he has it at rank five now the question is is he worth it is he worthy enough of an attacker to be viable enough all the way until rank five because for a while, you're just going to be, you know, you have a spot in the rank of survival dungeons being used, and you're just going to have to be ranking up this attacker without dodge area. So you have to weigh if his moves are good enough for that or not. So, so we have expert wielder deals moderate water damage to one enemy, applies drown to one enemy. All right, zero stamina, no zero cooldown, twenty six stamina. Um, pretty spammable, I guess. Lethal whiskers, I love that. Deals low light damage to all enemies. Alright, it's just a low AoE. It's classic. This is very powerful. I am starting to get very excited that this guy is a lot better than I thought he was. And I'm going to have to start ranking up this shrimp man. So, Barrier of Blades. Removes positive status effects from all enemies. Deals moderate light. So, this is like the perfect AoE. Like, in any situation. Because, like, they, have all, they all have evasion. Let's say they have Megaton. They have, um, you know, one of the pyrophobic, lightphobic, aquaphobic shields. All of those are very annoying and popular. Now, boom, you have an AoE that cleanses everything away. They're triple damage. They're everything. And then you do your AoE damage, which could kill because this, if you give them, like, if you give anyone the right runes, like, you know, three strength X or something, you'll always kill. So this is very powerful. Of course, 48 stamina, three turn cooldown is pretty high. But for a cleanse AoE on a strong attacker, I'd say it's worth it. Circle of Shelter applies a Thunderphobic Shield, Life Regeneration, and Stamina Regeneration to itself. Requires cooldown. One turn. So, I gotta say, I absolutely love this move. Thunderphobic is his weakness, his elemental weakness, so I hate that he leaves it open. It's kind of like, you know, this is... Like I was saying, if you do have the one element that you do need to, um, you know to have the elemental weakness against them, then you can destroy them past the shield. But then again, in a way, this is just an evasion unless they can climb have pierce, pierce. And you're gonna get hit with like light pierce a lot, maybe fire pierce. But yeah, cleansing, I mean, I there hasn't been a monster with a move like this, positive effect removal then moderate AoE in a while. And then he's got life regeneration and stamina regeneration, giving this guy um, surprisingly high um, what is it called? High vitality? Regeneration abilities? Whatever. Because he can stamina regen, life regen on a one turn cooldown with a basic form of evasion. That is so powerful and I think if I can find a way to make it work, it is so worth running. What? This is so good too. Form 0. Okay, so this is a 36 stamina one turn cooldown, although for a stamina regeneration to cover the stamina and the fact that you can do it every other turn, extremely powerful. From 0. Applies dodge, applies area dodge. I always say dodge area. Everybody does. Double damage and damage boost to itself. So this is like, wow. This is, like, it's not even like um, Grax Shack's move where she just does... Um, applies dodge area double damage he does dodge area double damage and damage boost so you almost just do a triple damage plus dodge area which is his most powerful status caster so he'll be doing uh 2.5 times the damage that he would normally be doing and if you do from zero all of a sudden you have your protection then you do your positive um status effect removal and then moderate light aoe that could be so deadly i've got to say this monster is just seeming better and better. So I think you're going to have to run from zero. Sea Force deals moderate water damage to all enemies, applies drown. This is just the water AoE. Um, some people wouldn't recommend it, but I really have to. Oh, look at that. That's zero stamina. That's nice. Um, yeah, they wouldn't recommend it too heavily, but I think I have to. Because like this is um, um water AoE, and water is the big thing that he has over the light meta. And it's super powerful, so you definitely want him to have this move so that you have your strong water attack that'll take out all your enemies. 
Uh, you could just run Expert Wielder, which does do good damage output on zero cooldown, but he's got better moves. He's one of those monsters who he does have the good zero cooldown or not that much stamina moves, but his like higher moves are just so good that you really can't. So 30, 45 stamina, 3 turn cooldown, 48 stamina, 3 turn cooldown, 38 stamina, 2 turn cooldown. So they're decently high, but you're never really going to be like overlapping. Like you're never... If you see they have evasion, you're going to do this, then you're going to do this. You're never really going to, you know, be trying to spam barrier of blades. Although, I guess, since the cooldown is 3 turn, and since stamina is a problem, that's why Flash Slash is here. Deals low light damage to one enemy, applies days, gives one extra turn. So, it really wouldn't even matter if he did nothing in that it, in that move. It's almost like a non-inconsequential. So, little tap, you give them days just to, you know, be able to say you slapped on a status effect. This is really about having an extra turn so that you can cycle that 3 turn cooldown, 2 turn cooldown, 3 turn cooldown down. And it gives it takes 0 stamina so that you're not really feeding into his high stamina cost, you know, 45, 48, 38. So this move would easily let you cycle back into, let's say, um, from 0. It would let you cycle your dodge area back on. And then, you know, it wouldn't cost any stamina. So it's a pretty great move, but I don't know if I could suggest it. And then Shrimp Saver removes positive status effects from one enemy, deals insane light damage, applies sunburn. Look at that damage. That is at least 80 damage, uh, 85 on a good day, I think. I don't know. I can't tell. But that is so amazing, Shrimp Saver. It's a cleanse, insane light damage attack with a dot on a one-turn cooldown, 36 stamina. That is relatively low for a decent attack, but insane and sunburn all right i gotta say i got it i'm gonna be ranking this guy up this guy is amazing so darn now he's gonna start draining my pocket but he's definitely worth it wow i am caught off guard by how good he is so definitely um one speed two strength um his moveset is so good that it's really up to your you and what you think you'll need if you want a zero cooldown move to have that strong water attack you need to go ahead and add it uh you could really make an argument for flash slash because you know the high cooldown the high stamina cost so zero stamina and then you know get the cooldown moving given enemy days you can run an argument for circle of shelter i think when i'm doing rank up survival dungeon i'm going to use circle of shelter so that he has sustainability and then in pvp i'm going to use from zero form zero but yeah, okay, I gotta say now, with full confidence, it is definitely worth it to get this guy to rank 5. He is just amazing for taking on the meta. Even as an attacker without pierce, he can do positive effect removal, great, great damage buffing, and apply his dodge area. Just amazing, man. So, let me see if I can slap on... Here, you don't need this. And then, really, any sword would do. I'll just throw on cane sword. And his design is adorable. He always seemed like he was dancing to me to the point where I have like a short on my channel of just him dancing. Like just put music over his normal stance and it looks like he's dancing. It's hilarious to me. But let's go. So where do I want to showcase him? Um, actually, this is pretty good because I was just ranking up Shadonia with my beginner monsters. But now I can rank up him with them, which is great. So, I think the best place to showcase him could be PvP. You know what? Why not? Let's do it. And it'll showcase his great elements for PvP. So. Alright, so I'm going to have to go Blossom. Duke Shrimp Waiter. Uh, of course, his damage output is going to be pretty low, but with the Light Hater and his um, Form Zero move, I think he's going to be doing pretty decent damage output. Funnily enough, him and Shadonia have that in common, a rank 5 dodge area status caster, um, which people always have debates on if it's worth it or not. So, turn transfer. Of course, you do that move. Alright. And then this is a good, good display of what I want to show you with monsters like this, though. So, since he doesn't have pierce, he can't get to him. He can't get to him. And if this guy was a Uriel, I'd be able to do nothing. Of course, my damage output would be a lot higher. 
But still, Tawn Dodge area is always a threat. You really don't see this in the Mado right now. This is because I'm a little bit lower than usual. But still, it's a warning I have to give out. Um, Tawn Dodge area, you know, Megaton monsters, it'll always be hard to run a a monster like Duke Shrimp Waiter. Because without Pierce, you know, the be-all, end-all solution to everything in this game, you're always kind of screwed. Whoa. I completely for Bro. <gasps> oh my gosh. I completely forgot about that. I completely forgot that not only did she have trait disable, but, like, they all had revival's essence. So that's a... You know, that's a shout out to his revivals. That's good. So look, now I have my free shot. And look at that. If I was at a higher level, this is already doing almost 100,000 damage at rank 1 with no buffs. With low runes. So this guy is going to be a devastating damage output monster the more you rank him up. So, I mean, yeah. I was fighting an uphill battle the whole time. But still... That was a pretty good showcase. Um, I really should have remembered that the whole thing Shadonia's OP for is, you know, her trait disable and all that. But I didn't, and I'm man enough to admit that. So this looks like it's going to be a great display. Um, this is what everybody knows as, like, the original Duke Shrimp Waiter, Grack Shack. You know, she is also a light monster with dodge area, you know, very strong cleanse then single damage output attacks. They're really, like clones of each other but i'm not complaining duke shrimp waiter is really good and i am going to very much enjoy and advertise to you that you rank her up so look at this this is another good scenario so look i can do this aoe and since i have the light hater i would do a lot more damage to you since i have the water element which you're not even a, a real big part of the fire meta but you are nonetheless fire since i have the water element i could destroy you so, of course, I'm going to do Form 0. So, I have Dodge Area, so even if you did Trait Disable, I wouldn't be too worried. All right, Kevlar's Vest, Vata Magma's Armor. Of course, make sure these dots go nowhere. And, yeah, I'm about to have a, f a very strong attack. So, look at that. He almost triples his damage with a double damage boost, then damage boost. Oh, my God. This monster is so good, so fun. You really got to get him. And I have the board. I have a clean slate right now. So, turn transfer to Duke Shrimp Waiter. Boom! Look at that. Okay, so, after Form 0, which, look at this. Already, this is a 150, 150, 150. And he can kill them. At level 100 with not that great runes. And with his one buffing move, he can kill them. And then Grack Shack, he can take out because he got the Light Hater from her. But look at that. Double damage. Damage boost, and you're going to be doing crazy damage to fire monsters. So that is a great showcase right there. And then, of course, look, you, if you wanted to do Form 0 again, and you never thought you're, you were going to be using AoEs other than that water AoE, you could just run the uh, Flurry Flash, and then you could do that right here. You could do your Form 0, and then you could end it off with this move. So I think I'm going to take the fun route and just destroy him with damage output. So Hush Spell, turn to you, Form 0 um mega stun just to keep you from doing anything funny all right then let's cleanse let's get you cleaned up and then boom half a million health yeah that move is going to be like your big big move that is so powerful an insane attack after a cleanse that stuff is unheard of duke shrimp waiter people i've got to say you definitely want this monster ranked up he gets his best usability at rank 5, but honestly, seeing his moves and how ideal they are for the meta, how great they are, like, for a non-pierce monster, a uh, big victory right here. I gotta say, they're even usable on the way up to and without rank 5, so definitely rank up Duke Strength Waiter, definitely invest into them. Yeah, I'm gonna have a an upscale battle right here. Alright, so cleanse trait disable Ooh, this light oh my god you are about to get the best display of what i was trying to say ever so boom dismantle all right then turn transfer back to you don't run out of stamina boom trait disable 
now none of them can do anything but i did run out of stamina she does her cleanse aura of faith but darn i was so close so look now sh dig shrimp waiter as i said always pierce monsters that are going to reach past but look at that that is the big thing lust wings and insatiable heat the most powerful pierce aoe's right so those are ideally the big things you're going to be worried about are both fire based yes they're both fire based so look at this uh you could do this as i said you know cleanse away their status effects and then do your damage so look boom now he's not immune to control he's not immune to whatever else it was she doesn't have evasion although she did reapply it so now look i'm gonna do form zero i'm going to darn looks like i am not going to be able to turn transfer everything's disabled aura of blissfulness <gasps> Thank goodness, that was not a great move. Oh, but you... No? Yes? <gasps> I removed your pierce! Okay, everything's looking good right now. Alright, so, trade disable. I'm just gonna turn transfer. Look at this, so, with the light hater, with the proper elements, Duke Shrimp Waiter, level 100, destroys. Wow, and this isn't even hard. I'm not even struggling to, like, get this whole thing set up. This is just Shadowing being OP. This is Duke Shrimp Waiter being OP. Like, look at this. And Trait Disable is what I like to call defanging um, Serpent X. Because look at that. Without the trait, he can't do anything. His moves are still insanely strong. But once his trait is disabled, he really can't do anything. So, boom. And then you can cleanse again. Add Sunburn. Heart is a diamond. Rock Army Assault. At least I've reflected some of that. All right, and now I just have to kill him. Really, does it matter how? No. So, I'm gonna form zero, get you mega stunned. Then I'm gonna make sure everything stays disabled and let you go. So, boom, insane damage. Of course, raw damage output added to his very strong dodge area buffing move. He is just a beast to be reckoned with. So, and then you have two good dots. You have Sunburn, which completely destroys a lot of the dark monsters. And then you have Drowned, which, you know, is just the bane of light monsters. No, fire monsters. So, yeah, this match is gonna drag out, looks like. Ooh, I really got a question. Okay. Um, I think... Now, I'm not going to end it here. I'm going to show you guys this victory. You've waited too long. All right, so I've got this perfectly in place. Hard as a diamond. That absolutely su sucks. Why? All right. Nah, but it's it's too worth it to kill a King Autumn, you know? You never get this opportunity. So drowned. Stun him because clearly he can't be trusted to hurt himself. Um, that is probably a very healthy thing, but very bad news in this situation. And boom, you die to dots. So, yeah. That's going to have to be about it for my Duke Shrimp Waiter monster review. He's amazing for the current meta. Sadly, this is long past his release, where he's got to be slightly less amazing. But he is still almost unstoppable. He's got great traits, great damage output, great buffing moves. Which, I mean, attackers having good buffing moves for themselves? Rare. So yeah, definitely get him. Definitely rank him up. If you got him, congratulations. Be excited. I am going to love getting him to rank 5. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. It supports me and my content in these videos. And it means a ton to me. Um, leave a comment and I will respond. I always love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And yeah, do you like this guy? Do you think he's worth it? Do you think that it's just barely too late for him to be as viable? Kind of like Hydrorian where... Um, they were super, super powerful if you had them, but now with the new Abyssal Era, they're too outdated. I think personally, Blossom Era monster stats are still high enough to make it work. Like, Blossom Era and, um, yeah, from Doomsday Era up are the only things you can make work now. Uh, really, everything else is going to be a no-go. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe to join the Crab Army. We are at 170 subscribers. What? We are on a missile upward. Thank you all so much for helping me get here and you know join before 200 subs because now it looks like it's coming up soon and yeah
that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful. Hope to see you in the next one. Your favorite Omnius Crab, signing out.